If you're trying to save some money on a good prime lens in like the 50 millimeter category, then this is a video for you because we're comparing the Sony 50 millimeter 1.8 versus the Rokinon 45 millimeter 1.8. Let's talk specs because these are pretty similar on paper. The Rokinon is a 45 millimeter with a minimum aperture of f1.8 and a maximum aperture of f22. It's a minimum focus distance of 1.48 inches or 45 centimeters for those of you not using imperial units it has nine aperture blades has autofocus it does not have image stabilization and it comes in at 5.71 ounces or 162 grams the sony comes in at 50 millimeters with a minimum aperture of an f 1.8 has a max aperture of f 22 it has seven aperture blades has autofocus does not have image stabilization it weighs in at 6.56 ounces or 186 grams a little disclaimer as of the making of this video these sony's are really hard to come by new now over the next few days i'm going to be doing a shootout with these lenses and i will show you some side by side pictures later on in the video but overall physical impressions before we kind of get into the nitty gritty. The Rokinon one is made out of metal, which just makes it feel premium. That's not to say that this doesn't feel like a premium lens. Sony uses some really good plastic. However, I will always take a metal lens over a plastic lens any day of the week. Plastic lenses tend to scratch and look bad, whereas Metal lenses tend to scratch and they look bad, but in a good way, like there's like patina on them. That's also why I prefer metal lenses. In terms of focus ring, they kind of turn endlessly, but I'm gonna give it to the Sony here just because the knurling on it is a lot more pronounced. In terms of height, they're about the same, but in profile, you'll see the Sony gets chunkier towards the top, whereas the Rokinon has a slimmer silhouette all the way around. So lens cap, I'm not going to press the uh, little indentations here to click it off. I'm gonna grab it from the sides where you're not supposed to be able to take it off, and it just kind of comes off on the Rokinon one. Not a fan of that. The Sony one stays on a lot better, so we're gonna give it to that one there. On the back end, you can see that we do not have any weather sealing, so uh, that's not to really be expected on any budget lens, if we're being honest. You don't want any mold or fungus growing in your lenses, so just be careful when you're out in moist or wet environments. I will be testing both of these out using my Sony a7R II that we actually picked up in our previous video where I talk about how to buy used professional photography gear so you can get great stuff on a budget. All right, we're back, and if you can't tell by my voice, I got sick, so I didn't really get to get out too, too much. I had to wait until I tested negative to be around people, so I really only had my house and my family, and I could have walked around outside with some nature stuff, but honestly, I was feeling so miserable uh, that I didn't get a chance to, but we gotta get this video made, so we figured out a solution, and we drove around, and we did some drive-by, so you'll see some of those uh, in this video, as well as some stuff that's staged in my house. Not what I normally would have liked to have done, but you gotta roll with the punches sometimes. So let's get onto the computer and do some side-by-sides. These are all pictures around my house and staged shots, or I was sitting in the car as we were at traffic lights and things like that. I'm just gonna give you a variety of different tests that I run when I'm comparing lenses. Before we get into it though, can you guess which one is which? All right, so let me pull it up right here for you guys. So on the right is the Samyang 45 and the one on the left is the Sony. So right here you can see the plane of focus is from the nose to the hair, nose to the hair. On both of these, the 45 is just a little bit wider, so you get a little bit more back behind the shoulder here as well as in the background as well. But if we zoom in to 100%, we see the noise pattern is fairly similar. Um, the colors are just a little bit different, as you can see. Um, and there's a little bit of some chromatic aberration going on in both of these lenses. However, it's minuscule and can be adjusted. What I'm noticing here now as we zoom out just a little bit is that the Samyang looks a little bit sharper, although a little less clarity, and the Sony has a little bit more clarity, although it's softer. And you can see that there's a little bit of like haze going on uh, on the Sony side on the left with the light. Um, it almost looks like there's like a black filter on it or something like that. Both of these are raw right out of the camera, no edits or anything like that. And I will prove it right now. See, everything is flat, 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 flat. So I'm not <clears throat> trying to skew anything one way or the other. All right, let's zoom out. And I personally prefer the Samyang on this one. 
All right, number two, can you tell which one is which? And I'll show you right now that the Samyang is the one on the left this time and the Sony is the one on the right. Just to prove to you, everything is the same. Here are my settings across both of them uh, and no edits or anything like that. Let's go back here. There's a little bit more magenta in this one and you can also see a little bit of something that got cut off when I composed it originally with the 50 over on this side, there's a little bit more depth of field. Here's a prime example where you can see what the five millimeter difference in focal length is actually doing to our subject here. So let's zoom in. Okay, so we're zoomed in and you can see the difference of what the five millimeter length does to our subject. The, sub, uh, the one on the right is the Sony and our subject is flattened out just a little bit. And then there's a little bit more roundness or depth to our subject's face here on this one. Um, this is like a preference thing and it's not, it's a pretty minuscule difference here. Natural vignetting is pretty similar on both of these. So continuing with this low light testing theme, this was one where we were at a stoplight and we noticed that there's like the old school Arby's, you know, light up sign. So I had to stop and get a picture of that um, really quick because there was someone behind us who's getting very angry at this stoplight. So we pulled up the menu on the side here, no editing on either of them. And I will show you which one is which and my settings at which I took this picture. So the Sony is on the left the Rokinon on the right. A few things here. We're seeing the magenta come out a little bit more on the Sony in this one. The reds are a little bit more true to life, but I think the reason we're seeing that isn't because of a magenta skew. Uh, I think it's because of that haziness that the Sony has, like that kind of softness, almost like there's a black filter on it. We are seeing a little bit more color noise in the dark areas here. And then on the Rokinon one, it's a little bit more natural true to what your eye is seeing, but I actually prefer the Sony on this one because it gives you a bit more of the atmosphere in the picture. So let's move into the foreground just a little bit here. So the highlights on these cars here, you can see there's a little bit of fringing, there's some chromatic aberration, but again, all budget lenses are going to have just a little bit of that. So one thing I'm noticing here as I pan around, again, the noise looks a lot better on the Rokinon than it does on the Sony. So I don't know, let me know what you think. I could go either way on this photo, but I would probably lean towards this one. Moving on to test the bokeh here. My daughter propped up her Barbie for me and let me use that. So you can probably tell by now which one is which, but let me know which one you think looks better because there's a few things right off the bat that I'm noticing. And this happened in a few of the tests here. The one on the left is probably my preference and that one is actually the Samyang one here. And uh, same settings, no edits or anything like that like we've been doing. However, one thing I wanna point out right here is let's pull up this bokeh ball right here. It's flat on certain parts of this. And this happened on every single uh, test that I did in this setting here. In the center, the bokeh was not round and you could see probably what I'm thinking is the edge of the aperture blades that are shaping it. Um, there are only seven in the Sony and there are nine in the Samyang, which is why I think we're getting better bokeh in the center here. Now, once you get out to the fringes here, they both start to do the cat's eye thing, uh, which is fine. Again, um, cat's eyeing is going to happen to s almost some extent on every lens, no matter how good it is. Yeah, that one's just like off-putting. My pick here is gonna have to go with the Samyang. All right, so this one is taken at F8 so that we could compare some details here, right? Um, this was a very dark setting, and this was one of the only pictures that I was able to take outside of my house with these two lenses. So let's zoom in on the corners here to see where it is. So the details probably, I'm guessing, gonna be almost identical in the center on these. Remember, left is Samyang, right is the Sony. Um, Again, we're seeing the same thing we've seen across all of these images here where the Sam Yang one is a bit sharper, right? But the Sony one has a lot more clarity even though it's softer. Let's look at the edges here, right? So we're at the ends of the picture here, right? There's a little bit less color noise going on which has been kind of uh, an issue between both of these lenses, but in this case, you know, I'm gonna give it to the Sony because there's less tint going on there. 
If we go into the corners here, right? Uh, the Sony is just a little bit more readable in the corners. Overall, I like that the Rokinon is just a little bit wider in terms of its focal length. That five millimeters does make a little bit of a difference. Now, I did like the bokeh on the Rokinon lens just a little bit better. The nine blades in there are gonna do a better job of, you know, reducing the harder edges of the bokeh. It's gonna be a little bit more round perceptually. Now, I thought the Rokinon lens was sharper, but I didn't think it was clearer. And you could see that in some of the pictures that we took. But on the Sony lens, I thought there was a little bit more clarity, although the images were just a little bit softer. I shot these without any filters or modifications uh, over top of them or between the camera and the lens, uh, just right lens right on the body. And what we saw was that the Sony had a little bit more of that dreamy look to it, almost like we were using uh, a black filter like you'd see some cinema cameras do. It didn't really feel like it had a digital, you know, it wasn't hyper clarity and stuff like that that digital cameras sometimes put out, um, which I really liked about that lens. The one thing we I didn't like about the lens is that it seemed like what it did with light was just a little bit too unpredictable to me, or at least that's something I would have to get comfortable with. Overall, I think they're both good picks if you can get them on a deal. So if you're looking around for these lenses and one is cheaper than the other, grab the cheaper one. I think they're pretty even, um, but I think that the Sony lens just kind of like barely edges out the Rokinon one. So I'd rather take a softer lens with more clarity over a lens that's sharper with less clarity. Now, if somebody's not zooming into these pictures or they're for like social media and stuff like that, that's probably, you could probably get away with it. But for me, a lot of my images end up getting printed, which is why I would want to go with something that has a little bit more clarity. So it's just a preference thing. I personally am probably going to stick with this Sony lens, uh, but it's up to you. And I hope that this video was uh, a little bit more clarifying for you. And if you liked it, give me a thumbs up, leave a comment, letting me know anything that you think I missed or overlooked. And I'm sorry that I got sick and did not get to go outside and do a lot of stuff. So if you like this video, why don't you check out a few more videos on the channel? And if you like them, then hit the subscribe button. I really hope to see you on the next one.